Hey muchachos and muchachas, it's good to be back with you. And in this short video, I'd like to help you understand sort of the big ideas behind statics. Statics is an introductory engineering class dealing with structures. If you're in uh, mechanical or aerospace or agricultural or civil or some other flavors of engineering, chances are pretty good you're going to take a statics class. And in your career after that, you may well be using statics. Wouldn't it be nice to know a little bit about it now so you don't have to figure it out before while well, the class starts? So that's what this video is about. Okay. Engineers work with structures. We design structures. We build structures. We try to figure out if structures are going to break. And if it looks like they're going to break, based on our calculations and experiments, we modify designs so they don't break. Now, structures could be just about anything. It could float, fly, sit there, roll around, whatever. Buildings are structures, bridges are structures, cars contain structures, airplanes are structures, everywhere around us. Anything that's bearing a load and doing so in a useful way, that's a structure. So when structures work, they're great. Sometimes though, not so great. So that's the big idea. Why statics? Well, statics is the simplest structures class. It makes some simplifying assumptions. We assume that um, the materials don't deform. Okay? They don't stretch. They don't bend. They just sit there. They're rigid. Okay? And in doing that, it makes the math much, much simpler. Right? And we look at things like trusses and beams and uh, other simple structural elements because you can build lots of really cool stuff out of uh, trusses, beams, plates, that sort of thing. So let's start with an experiment. Here's a can, empty. Now, will this hold a 95 kilogram engineering technology professor? I don't think so, but let's try it. Nope. So what if I could set it up so that the can only supported part of my weight? Well, here's the can over here and a board, and there's a support over here. So if I sit over here, this, this support takes most of my weight and the can takes hardly any. If I start to move over, eventually I'll get to the point where the can crushes. So I'm sitting pretty much under the support. Now most of my weight is on the board, not very much is on my feet. So if I start to slide over here, eventually that can's gonna crush. Tension's really building, isn't it? Oh boy, here we go. Oh, and there it goes. Okay. There's not much theory here. It basically boils down to about four things, right? One, some of the forces in summation, that's the, the Greek letter sigma, if you haven't seen that before, I think you probably have, but if not, that's the Greek letter sigma, and that stands for summation. Some of the forces equal zero. If the sums of the forces don't equal zero, your structure isn't static, it's moving. That's dynamics, that's another class. Two. Sum of the moments equals zero. What's a moment? Not that kind of moment. Moment is another word for torque, tor something, something that makes a, a structural element want to rotate. Okay? Number three. Okay, stress is force divided by area. Stra the, the, the little letter sigma, this is a capital sigma. This is a lowercase sigma. Right? That stands for stress. That's almost universally used for stress. Is force divided by area. Last thing. You can't push a rope. Laugh it up, but you'd be surprised how often I see students try to do that. This is it. This is 100% of the theory. I'm not hiding anything from you. Okay? This is statics. So if that's the theory, why don't we just stop right here? Why don't we just save you 16 weeks of sweating over statics? Well, it turns out that this is only the theory. You have to learn how to apply it. You have to learn how to predict whether structures that you haven't built yet 
are going to be able to bear the loads that they're going to be subjected to. Are they going to stand up? Are they going to fall down? Standing up's usually good, falling down's usually bad. Your bosses, who I hope are going to pay you just a truckload of money, will do that because you can take knowledge like this, apply it to things that are of value to your company or whatever organization you're in, and the amount of value you recreate for that organization is more than what they're paying you. Okay, we've done our experiment. Let's do an analysis now to make some sense of what just happened. Now, the recipe you follow in statics is always the same, and it's only got a couple of steps. Step one is to draw something called a working diagram. That's basically a picture of what's going on. Step two is to draw a free body diagram. That's a much simplified diagram that includes the forces and the moments that are at work. Step three is to write out your equations of equilibrium. And in practice, that's some of the forces equal zero, some of the moments equal zero, just like we saw. Step four, solve for something. That's it, that's the recipe. You'll use it for pretty much every statics problem you ever do. Okay? So, let's start. Number one, let's draw a working diagram. Well, let's see, there's a beam. There's the little support that was on it. There's the little can that was under it, maybe. And let's see, there, I'm gonna draw this. Okay, there's an engineering technology professor who probably eats more donuts than he should. Okay, that's the working diagram. There's the floor there and there's the floor there. All right, well that's okay. It tells us what's going on, but it's pretty hard to put numbers on that, okay? So that's one, that's the, we'll call that the working diagram. And it's very, very simplified, very symbolic. You don't need, you need, don't need a lot of detail there. Step two is gonna be the free body diagram. This is the one that we're gonna make the most use of. This is the one where we put all the loads in. So I'm gonna put, there's the beam. This is the only thing I'm interested in right now. Let me make sure I get that in frame, okay. All right, so there's only three loads on this. There's force on the right side, called FR. There's force on the left side, and I'll call that FL. And let's see, then there's going to be the force P for the professor. All right. We're going to need to know a length. And that is just a little less than 2 meters. It's about 1.8 meters. All right. And we're going to need to know this one. And for right now, we'll just call that X. Because I moved, it's going to have a couple of different values, right? So, well, let's see. We're going to need a mass here. Mass of the professor, I hate to say, is about 95 kilograms. All right? A lot of donuts at work there. And that's about all we need right now. So, there's step two. Step three. Okay? Equations of, and it's called static equilibrium. What that means is, those are the equations that describe a structure that isn't moving. Well, let's see. Um, we're going to need a coordinate system here. So if you don't know what else to do, this is usually the coordinate system to use. There are reasons to use other ones, and if you have a good reason, use it. I'll get out of your way here in a second. I'm screwing this up. There we go. Okay. In fact, let's put the M over here. There x, y, and then the moment goes counterclockwise. It goes from x to y. It follows the right-hand rule. So that's the, uh, the coordinate system we're going to use here. Well, let's see. We've got forces in the y direction, so we'll say some forces in the y direction. Forces going up, the, the forces of the uh, uh, pivot against the bottom of the beam is up. The force of the can on the bottom of the beam is up. And the force of me on the top of the beam is down. So, let's see, that one, FR, goes in the positive Y direction, all right? 
FL, also in the positive direction, me. Force of the professor is in the negative direction. All right, so there's your free body diagram right, working for you here. So let's draw the sum of the moments. Now, moment is a torque, and moment has to be figured about some point. So what point are we going to use here? Well, you can use any point you want. Um, I don't really care what that is. So let's, let's, okay, let's figure our moments about that point. If I, you know, I don't need R, so it doesn't matter if I don't use it. So some of the moments about R, the right-hand point, okay? So let's see. Force of the professor going down at that, using that to arm, makes the beam want to rotate counterclockwise. So that's positive according to that sign convention. So x times the force of the professor. Now this one is the force in the, on the left is moving up. So that's going to make the beam want to move clockwise. Well, that's a negative moment according to my coordinate system. I assume coordinate directions. So that's minus, and I'm going to call this L for right now, L times FL, and that equals zero. Well, I got lucky here. Because I picked that, I've got an equation right here that doesn't have force in the right, on the right-hand side on it. I don't, know, I don't care what it is anyway, so it doesn't matter. Do I know what that is? You bet I do. Do, you know, do I know what that is? Yeah, I can take a guess. And uh, I know what that is. So the only thing I don't know in this equation is force on the left-hand side, the force that's making the can want to crush. Okay. Well, one equation and one unknown, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, I think that's what that is, I should be able to solve that. If there is a solution, I should be able to find it. So let's do it this way. Let's solve for FL. Well. L times FL equals X times FP. I want to know that. FL equals X over L times FP. So there's an equation that tells me pretty much what I need to know. That's step four over here. Solve for something. All right. I'm running out of board here, so I'm can you guys see that okay? Yeah, okay. I'm running out of board here, so I'm going to have the whiteboard fairy take care of this for me, and then uh, we'll start up there again. Ready? I got to go. I got to go talk to the whiteboard fairy. That's pretty good. So let's just move that up here. If you want to think about this another way. X over L, that's basically a proportion of the, the length of the beam. If that's zero, that means I'm sitting right on the pivot and the load on the can is zero. If I'm all the way to the other side, if X equals L, then the can, then this is one, that means that the uh, load on the can is exactly my weight. So if I sit over the pivot, the force is zero. If I sit over the can, the can is supporting my entire weight. That's what the math tells you. Well, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So let's see. I don't know how far over I was sitting. Let's say x is a quarter of a meter. That's got to be a route, about the right answer. Okay. And let's see. Let's put some numbers in here. So 0 0.250 over 1.80 times nine, whoops, times 95 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared is going to be, now, before I get too much further, let's think about something here. There's meters there and meters there. I took the trouble to put units in here. Eh, do we really need those? I mean, I know what all this is. Do I really need to put all that extra stuff in there? Yes. Yes, I do, because what they, what's happening is the, uh, I can track units through the problem. And if when I get to the end of the problem, the units are correct, the numbers will pretty much come along for the ride. So if you track your units correctly and they come out correctly, it's likely that your numbers will come out correctly. If your units are wrong, give it up. There's something's wrong. If your units are wrong, there's no way the number is right. 
So in, in exchange for this little bit of uh, additional sort of clutter on the board, what I get is an outstanding way to check my answer. Well, do you not want to check your answer? You want to just guess if it's right or not? Ugh, that doesn't feel too good. So let's check our answers whenever we can. So let's see, meters and meters cancel out. Kilogram meter per second squared, that's a Newton. Should it be a Newton? Let's see, force, yeah, it should be a Newton. Okay, so let's see, that's a, uh, I had to pause for a second. I talked myself into a corner and I realized I didn't know what that number was. So I had to pause and grab my phone and check it real quick. This turns out to be 129.44 Newtons. Hmm. Well, that's less than I weigh. That's not that much, is it? I would have thought a can would hold more than that. Well, it's possible that really is the load that makes that can crush. I know something you don't know, though. The board I used was one I found down in the guitar lab, and it's got a little bit of a twist to it. The board that was flat on the end I was sitting in was crooked on the other end, and it applied a load to one edge of the can. It didn't apply a load uh, to the whole surface of the can evenly. I suspect that made it crush at a slightly lower load than it would otherwise. Okay. When you're designing a structure, do you want to design assuming everything is perfect everywhere, nothing will ever be misaligned, and if something it does become misaligned, it'll fail? Now, that's what we have safety factors for. That's why we do calculations like this, to see if maybe there's a failure mode we should worry about. So there you have it. Learned a little bit about statics, seen a little bit about structures, did an experiment, ran through the recipe here, we did a uh, working diagram, free body diagram, equations of static equilibrium, and we solve for something. So there you go. There's a statics problem. Hope this helps. We'll talk to you next time.